how does the Battle of South Mountain begin? How does it play out? Kind okay, of uh, sure. You know. So what happens is you have the Ninth Corps crossing the Catoctin Mountains, uh, getting into the valley, and they're they're heading toward. They're actually heading up uh, the Route 40, alternate Route 40, which was the National Road. And what happens is they encounter um, well, the, the cavalry commander is Alfred Pleasanton. Mm-hmm. He says they're rebels up at Turner's Gap because that's where that, that road goes right up through Turner's Gap. Mm-hmm. They're, yeah, they're rebels there. Um, but if you take a loop around, there's another gap called Fox's Gap, only a mile away, and it seems to be undefended. So come around, go through Fox's Gap, get over South Mountain, come around, and beat those rebels who were on the others, who were on, still at the top of the mountain. And that's what he's going to do. Um, what he doesn't realize is D.H. Hill is going to rush a brigade down to uh, Fox's Gap to defend it, under Samuel Garland. It's a North Carolina brigade. It's Iverson's brigade at Gettysburg. Okay. That is a brigade that's going to be constantly getting beaten up. <laughs> and so they get to Fox's Gap as the Ninth Corps is starting to arrive, and you have Crooks's brigade and Scammon's brigade, so they're going to actually be up against two brigades, you know, against one, and they're going to be fighting all morning. Um, George... Um, George, uh, George B. Anderson's brigade will also arrive, and eventually Garland's going to be defeated. Garland's going to get himself killed. And so you're going to have, but more and more of the Ninth Corps are coming to in, and all afternoon they're going to be fighting. And the Confederates are outnumbered, but they're holding on for dear life. All they have to do is stop the Yankees. They don't have to beat the Yankees. They have right. to stop them from getting across the gap. And by nightfall, what's happening is, or toward nightfall, Hood's, uh, the rest of um, uh, uh, Longstreet's men are coming from Hagerstown. So Hood's men are coming down. They're sent from uh, from uh, Turner's Gap. You're going to have some of J.R. Jones's division coming down as well. And by the end of the day, uh, the gap holds. They're able to hold, and the Yankees are not able to push their way through. Um, the commander of the Ninth Corps, and it gets confusing. We're not going to, I don't know if you want to get into detail, but because of the wings, Burnside's not commanding the Ninth Corps. That is a very tricky situation there. Yeah. It even, even at the Battle of Antietam, it's Oh, still well, that's confusing. an interesting one as well. But it's Jesse Reno who commands the Ninth Corps, and he's going to get himself killed uh, in the evening of, as night is falling. Some say it was friendly fire. Could be the 35th Massachusetts. Some say it was Hood's men. But, but the Confederates hold. What's happening further north, and this is not going to be until later in the afternoon, you have the First Corps coming down the National Road, and uh, most of them are going to peel off to the right. And so you're going to have um, uh, Reynolds' division peeling off. You're going to have Hatch's division peeling off, and they're going to take not a road over, but they're actually going to they're actually going to climb up the mountainside, literally in many cases holding up to, up by twigs and and trees and pulling themselves up. And here you have Rhodes's uh, Robert Rhodes's Alabama Brigade strung out, trying to hold on desperately. One brigade against essentially uh, most of a corps that's coming up, and um, they they're going to be beaten pretty badly. And by nightfall, they're going to be driven up up the mountainside, and they will take it's, uh, is Meade's, it Meade's men. Meade's men. Okay, I, I was trying to remember. I thought it was Meade that yes, makes it Meade, up. Yes, uh, Meade. Well, Meade is going to replace Reynolds. Reynolds is going to be going into Pennsylvania because right. they need militia, yeah. But he technically c- uh, commanded a brigade, but you're right. At this point, he's, he's commanding that division. Uh, you got Ricketts division as well, so you got three divisions. And they're going to get up on the top of the hill, but it's it's like midnight. But what's interesting is, so that's Fox's Gap, that's Turner's Plateau. Fox's Gap, not so successful, Ninth Corps. Um, but uh, Tur- Frosttown Plateau are successful. Get up top, but it's too late. And then you have the venerable Iron Brigade 
which was not the Iron Brigade then. There was another Iron Brigade in that in the Army. They were North. They were New York troops. We won't go there. The Phelps's Brigade, Walter Phelps's Brigade, but they're coming straight up National Road, up against a Confederate brigade under Alfred Colquitt, that is in a very strong position on the side of the mountain. And, and that's a Turner's Gap, right? That's a Turner's Gap, and they will hold. You know, usually the, the usually Iron Brigade doesn't get stopped. Mm-mm. They that get terrain stopped. out there is terrible, though. It is. And is it starting to get dark by the time they it get there? It is getting very dark. See, that I, I talk about it a lot on our podcast, Nighttime Fighting, in, in, in an era before night vision optics. Yes. And uh, I talk about it so much because I don't think people realize how, how insane that would be to do, you know? Because, again, in the modern era, we have all these cities that give off this glow that illuminate the night sky more than it would be if it was just, n- you know, no man-made uh, civilization out there at all. Right. It would be dark. And the ter- the terrain out there, you don't realize from a distance how steep oh, South Mountain is. It really is. I mean, it is. It is crazy. And what, but whether you're on the, a road or whether you're climbing up the side, it's still very, very steep. And the road is very, very curvy. Mm-hmm. Very difficult. It would be a nightmare. It would yes, be a nightmare. Very much so. So you have that happening. And what's interesting is if you look at Lee and what's happening during this time, when he's surprised, because he didn't think that the Yankees were going to come that quickly. And he's he almost aborts the invasion at that point, not because of the fighting at South Mountain, but because if you look at a map where McClaws is, if, if the Union Army gets across South Mountain, especially the Sixth Corps, and we'll talk about Cramptons, uh, and they get into the Pleasant Valley, and they turn left, they can pin two Confederate divisions against the Potomac River and potentially destroy, um, you know, maybe 10, 12,000 guys. Which is a lot when you only got 36. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's, that's their pre-numbers, so they're probably smaller than that, but still... He was very nervous. He could not afford to lose that number of men. And just philosophically, you don't want to have two of your divisions destroyed. Mm-mm. So he's he's really nervous, and he's about ready to abort. Um, but he's getting encouraging news. So what happens at, at Crampton's Gap? Again, that's going to not start till later in the afternoon. This is the 6th Corps. You have uh, Slocum's division leading... And you're, it's, it's a fascinating battle, and it's a really neat place. All of these places are neat. Fox's Gap is a pristine battlefield. Um, Frosttown Gap, you've got some houses, but it's very steep. It's hard to get up it's there. It's super steep. It, yes. It, unbelievable. I, I was shocked. I was shocked when Laura was taking me out there and showing me all that. I, I, I couldn't believe it. Because you look at the there. maps and stuff, and you think, okay, you yeah. know. Uh, you've got to be up there to see. It is, uh, it's unbelievable. Yes. So Crampton's what's happening is you would think that the defense would be up on the mountainside, right? At on an, the top at, of the mountain. With an advantage of... of yes, a of, height. Yeah, height advantage. Um, it was actually a cavalry commander who started the fight. His, uh, his name was Thomas Munford. He commands a, a brigade of uh, Confederate cavalry, of Virginia cavalry, and he's taking position at the base of the hill. And here come reinforcements. Um, Parham's uh, brigade uh, will join him. And Parham says, okay, well, you know, and, and he was actually outranked by Munford. And Mun- and Munford is going to make his defensive line behind a stone wall at the base of a hill. He's got about 1,200 guys against probably at least 6,000 uh, <laughs> that, that, that wow. Slocum had. But Slocum has to advance against an open field, you know, along an open field. These guys had never been victorious before. One of the books I've written was on the 1st New Jersey Brigade. They'd been beaten up every battle they'd been in. And here they are in this open field in Slocum's division, and they are told to charge. And they see the rebels behind the stone wall, and they just go nuts. I mean, it... They're not afraid. They're actually in a frenzy. They're yelling out Carney. Carney was the original commander who was killed at Chantilly. Mm-hmm. They're yelling out Second Manassas where they got beaten up pretty good. Mm. And they're tr- nobody could stop them. 
this whole division, nobody's going to stop them. And the Confederates behind this very small unit behind the stone wall starts running up the hill because they know they can't stop them. And the Confe- and the Union troops are in a frenzy. I mean, it is. They're killing them. They're bayoneting them. They're, they're shooting them in the back. There's, there's no quarter. Um, meanwhile, McClaws is sending more reinforcements down. Now, you have to understand, McClaws knew that Crampton's Gap was an issue, but so is Brownsville, Brownsville Pass. So you got two possible places that the Union Army could try to come, ac- could co- try to come across. Semmes had a couple, three brigades that he has to stop the Yankees from getting. He has to simply hold them back. Because Harper's Ferry is very close to uh, capitulating. If he can hold them long enough, doesn't have to defeat them, just needs to hold them. And so uh, Semmes says, I think they're going to come across the Brandsville Pass. So that's where he has most of his men. He sends Parham over to um, the uh, Crampton's Gap, and he guessed wrong. And so he's quickly sending men over, and... You know, the worst time, and you both know this, the worst time to bring troops into action is when the the enemy is in full advance and you have uh, the Cobb Legion, which will take position on the side of the mountain. These Yankees are coming up. They will actually, they're going to be attacked on three sides. They will form a, actually bend into a, a V, and the commander, Alexander Lamar, who's a young man, says, we need to st- stand our ground and give time for those Virginians to, who were at the base of the hill to get away. Meanwhile, he's going to lose, I believe, over 70% of his men oh my gosh, that's on the side of that mountain. He's going to get killed. And the, 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 the Union troops will be successful. They will be fighting uh, at the top of the mountain, desperate rear guard action. The Confederates are swept aside. And so you're William Frank- Franklin. You have taken Crampton's Gap. All you have to do is march down the side of the mountain into Pleasant Valley, make a left turn. You're about five miles away from Harper Ferry. Boom. And you've also cut off everybody north of that position, too. Yes, potentially. And so, you know, again, if we can second guess them. But his men have been fighting for many hours. They're tired. Up Not a, true. Up a mountain, too. Yes, but he's got Smith's division behind him. Uh, and he says, you know what, guys? You can rest. <laughs> You're going to be able to sleep. Same thing with those guys on uh, Frosttown Plateau. Rest. Lee's army, on the other hand, is, you know, they're marching. They're All night, they're marching. And so getting back to Crampton's Gap, what's going to happen is... Uh, in the morning, uh, the Union Army, or the Sixth Corps, is going to come down the mountainside to the Pleasant Valley. And what McClaws does is he has six of his bri- two, four, so yeah, six of his brigades lined up along. If you've seen the Pleasant Valley, it's not that wide. Yeah. He actually bl- plugs up the valley so that, um, and even though he's outnumbered, um, Franklin, who tends to be pretty cautious, says, "Mm -mm." and meanwhile, he's hearing this is on the 15th. He's hearing the cannon fire at Harper's Ferry. So he knows it's still intact. And all of a sudden, the cannon fire stops. And he says, why am I pushing this? He says, it had to have capitulated. He says, let's head on back to Antietam, where the army was was uh, the rest of the army was forming. 